Why was Israel losing a war with Benjamin that God approved of? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Judges on Walking Through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Judges 20, verses 26 to 35, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Judges 20, verse 26, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Judges 20, beginning at verse 26. Then all the children of Israel, that is all the people, went up and came to the house of God and wept. They sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening, and they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So the children of Israel inquired of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of my brother Benjamin, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into your hand. Then Israel set men in ambush all around Gibeah, and the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day, and put themselves in battle array against Gibeah, as at the other times. So the children of Benjamin went out against the people, and were drawn away from the city. They began to strike down and kill some of the people, as at, as at the other times, in the highways, one of which goes up to Bethel, and the other to Gibeah, and in the field, about thirty, thirty men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, They are defeated before us at, as at first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee and draw them away from the city to the highways. So all the men of Israel rose from their place and put themselves in battle array at Baal Tamar. Then Israel's men in ambush burst forth from their position in the plain of Geba. And ten thousand select men from all Israel came against Gibeah. And the battle was fierce. But the Benjamites did not know that disaster was upon them. The Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed that day 25,100 Benjamites. All these drew the sword. The tribe of Israel in this chapter have been fighting a war against the tribe of Benjamin. The reason is that the tribe of Benjamin was providing safe harbor to men from Gibeah, a city in Benjamin, who had raped and led to the death of a concubine of a Levite. These men should have been punished with death for their crime, but Benjamin refused to turn them over. The battle itself, which took place in Gibeah, should have been an easy one, for the armies of Israel had about a 15 to 1 advantage over the armies of Benjamin. And yet in the first two days of battle, the Benjamites defeated the armies of Israel, resulting in a 10% loss of Israel's army. The question remains, though, why was this happening, seeing as how the Lord approved of what Israel was doing in trying to punish the men of Gibeah? If you read closely into the passage, what you're going to find is that Israel had an attitude problem. They were too trusting in their numerical strength and not on God. Back in verse 18, it is quite evident that Israel is confident, for all they ask of God is who should go first. God said that Judah should go first, but he didn't say that Judah would win. That's because until the battle had started, Israel had the opportunity to humble themselves and obtain victory through God's power. Israel did not, so God allowed Benjamin to humble Israel. Following the loss, yes, Israel was humbled, but not completely. For verse 22, which chronologically comes after verse 23, it would reveal to us that they still trusted in themselves over God. And so they lost again. Now coming to verse 26, we have the reaction of Israel after their second loss. It is, at, it is said that, the, that all the people went to the house of God and wept. Now they had wept after their first defeat, but the actions that followed this weeping was different. Before moving on though, we must ask, where did Israel go? Of course, we read that Israel went to the house of God, which could mean Shiloh, for we know from our study of Joshua that the tabernacle was there in the days of Phinehas. But some manuscripts and the English translation that used them say that Israel went up to Bethel due to, to the use of the Hebrew word that is usually translated as Bethel. But remember, Bethel means house of God, so simply because it, it is used does not necessarily mean that the city of Bethel is intended. It could be speaking of the tabernacle. So which is it? Well, concluding that Israel went to the city of Bethel creates 
problems as it concerns the Ark of the Covenant. If Israel was really in Bethel and not Shiloh in verse 26, that means that the Ark of the Covenant was there too. But why was it there? Well, yes, it could have been brought there because of the war, but the passage doesn't imply that the Ark was moved. It simply says that the Ark of the Covenant was there in those days. So we must then ask, where is the there? If the there is the city of Bethel, it would seem odd that we have no other reference in Scripture to the tabernacle being moved from Shiloh even for a short time before the time when the Philistines destroyed Shiloh in the days of Eli and Samuel. In fact, the reason that the tabernacle was placed in Shiloh was so that it wouldn't have to travel around. My point is that if the Ark of God was moved from Shiloh, as it, as it was in other times, the Bible is quite clear as to where it was moved and why it was moved. Yet here in Judges 20, the Bible doesn't say that the Ark had been moved at all. It says that it was there, leaving the where and why rather ambiguous. All of this leads me to believe that the Ark wasn't at Bethel, the city, but that house of God refers to the tabernacle which was still at Shiloh, and it was there that the Ark of the Covenant was situated. Shiloh itself is only 11 kilometers or 7 miles from Bethel, so this journey would not be far to travel at all. Why would the author make a big deal about the Ark of the Covenant being at Shiloh if that was where it should have been? Ask yourself, who wrote this book? It was someone who lived after the beginning of the period of the kings, because we have seen in chapter 19, in connection with this story, that mention is made of a time when Israel had no kings. If Samuel was the one who wrote this book, as is often assumed, then where was the ark in his days? It was not at Shiloh, for the Philistines destroyed that city in the days of Eli. It was in kirjath Jerem until the days of King David, apart from the tabernacle that stood in Shiloh. The fact that the ark had been in Shiloh, in the tabernacle in the days of this story here in Judges, would therefore needed to be pointed out to the readers of this passage in Samuel's day. Hence why it is mentioned. Bringing us back to the story now, how did the attitude of Israel change with this second time that they wept before the Lord? They humbled themselves by offering sacrifices and fasted before the Lord. Before they had wept, but not changed. This time they wept and changed. They recognized that if they were going to win, it would be by the Lord, not by their numerical strength. And so when they asked God again if they would go and fight against Benjamin, the Lord answered affirmatively and specifically told them that he would deliver Benjamin into their hands. And that's what we find on the third day of battle. Sure, the battle began like the other two battles had, with Israel sustaining some losses, but only a few this time. However, Israel drew Benjamin away from the city of Gibeah into a place where the army of Benjamin could be ambushed. And ambushed they were. For that day it is said that Israel killed 25,100 men of the armies of Benjamin, which is practically the entire army that had come into battle. What a difference trusting in the Lord made for Israel, from total defeat to total victory. We'll deal with the remaining parts of this chapter that are willing in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Judges chapter 20, verses 36 to 48, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.